Hi, family and friends. Thanks so much for stopping by here at Castle Dangerous. Tonight, it is a dark and stormy night. And so I thought that I would tell you the story of the flooring. When we started the flooring project, it was actually a couple decades ago. That flooring was still out in the garage, just waiting for the day when, hey, we were gonna do it. And then Terry's stay in the hospital made it so that we absolutely had to fix problems that are in the house. It was time. The parquet that was out in the garage came in and we discovered some of it was damaged. There hadn't quite been enough to do the whole floor anyway and that meant that I needed to adjust my thinking about what we were doing. I started looking for other flooring. I was hoping that I could get some salvage or maybe some old stock. The red oak, there just isn't any out there unless you want to pay a completely ridiculous price. Our friend Billy came to the rescue, went and got some tiles from a guy who was selling them on Marketplace, brought these beautiful birch tiles. They are lighter wood. Their surface is just beautiful. The only problem is there was still not quite enough square footage because the room is a really weird shape, so there was going to have to be some cutting somewhere. And then from the Ballard salvage, I got some red oak nail down flooring. With that, I finally had enough flooring to get started. That was when I discovered, when I was unpackaging all the tiles, that the red oak tiles and the birch tiles, while they were tongue and groove, they weren't the same tongue and groove. They weren't going to fit together unless I could cut them so that they could join together. I cut the first few by hand. It was really slow. I figured this was just going to take forever. But Terry, by the 20th of November, was well enough that he could come upstairs and we brought up the chop saw and he was able to do some of the work every day and he would get a bunch of pieces ready and then he would go and rest and I would put the floor down. So this is the result of him cutting those tiles and me laying the floor. Good morning. It is Thanksgiving and I have a lot to be thankful for. I'm still working up in the bedroom. I'm gonna work on the flooring. It was so beautiful. I know you're not supposed to shoot with backlight, but the light coming through the window is so gorgeous. I had to share. We're still decorating in early modern construction. So the side table here is the Craftsman table saw. Thank you so much to Eric for loaning it to us. And with this and some time and some glue, a whole lot of bending over, I'm going to try and get a bunch of flooring in today before I go down and fix the turkey for dinner. almost finished and now it's time to turn my attentions to the south end of the room and get that floor done. I took a short break to watch the sunset for a couple of minutes out the window. It was truly an incredible view. And now it's time to get back to work. from the corner piece to here and I've run out of glue. The next morning I made a quick trip to the hardware store for more glue and then it was back to installing more of that flooring. It's early morning. I'm sitting on the settee and I realize I have to move the pile of lumber that's in the way and I've got to get the other two big pieces of furniture moved 
and of course move the settee because you have to have a settee in a workspace. So I've got that big armoire moved. That was a beast. There's just one more heavy antique to move and then it's on with the flooring. I'm past the doorway and headed toward the south corner. I'm really hoping that I can get all of the parquet put in today. I've made it to the end of my day and all the rest of the tiles have to be cut before they can be installed. All of the square pieces of the parquet were installed. It was time to create the border around the edges of the room with the red oak dimensional flooring. This was a glue and nail down process, which is a whole lot more interesting in time lapse. There was a lot of cutting and piecing to fill the gaps between the floor and the walls. The walls are only straightish and square and level is a complete fantasy in this room. There was even a bit of custom whittling to make things fit. Back over by the fireplace hearth was the last piece of parquet flooring to go in. Terry decided it would look best if it was cut into a triangle to mimic the shape of the hearth. The gap around the hearth area was definitely a shape. The house came with a poured concrete slab under a space pod fireplace that we replaced with a wood burning stove. The surface of the hearth had been aggregate, lots of bumpy little rocks with crevices for catching ash and dirt. We tiled over that with green marble and pearl granite. The pearl granite matches the stone that's in the wood burning stove. All those little pieces of flooring have disguised the really weird shape that the hearth is. And now the bedroom floor is finished. All that's left in here is the closet. Hi, good morning. It is December 23rd and we have been at this, uh, you most people would call it home improvement or renovation, but um, it was never done. So is that an ovation? I am working now on the hallway that is outside the bedroom and it is progressing two inches at a time toward the stairs. <sighs> two inches seems really dissatisfying until you realize that's two more inches of splinter inducing plywood from 1972 that is encapsulated in lovely red oak. This is starting at the bedroom door across the bathroom and headed toward the other bedrooms. Going past the strange architectural niche in the wall, getting wider and wider. Looking back at this nice clean floor being installed, it looks pretty simple and straightforward. Working with building salvage materials includes reconditioning old used pieces for new application. Every floorboard had to be checked for cracks, sanded and cleaned, sometimes a lot of sanding and cleaning. Then each had to be cut to size, the ends sanded. All of that had to be done before a piece could even be taken out into the hallway to be glued and nailed down into place. And then the next and the next. For that added degree of castle dangerous difficulty, there was always a pile of building materials that had to be moved from one place to the next so that I could continue putting flooring down and of course a heavy antique. The coat closet had to be moved out of its corner and then I had to clean under it. There was still so much plaster on the floor from when the house was built. As I was getting toward the edge of the stairs, I realized that I was going to have to stop and not be able to finish it because I didn't have a cap for the stairs. Even though it isn't completed, it's a whole lot better. Of course, there's more that can be done while I'm waiting for the piece for the stairs. This project has been made possible by the generosity and support of Aiden, Raya, Dale, Eric, Thea, Sela, Morgan, Louise, Dan, Laura, Carrie, Betty, David, Louie, Billy, and the kind guy who helped load the van with heavy materials that would have squashed me.
Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for joining me. Come back next time for the closet and some molding.